It's time for Tuesday Terror, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. The sound of the alert horn startles me, and I drop the small glass ornament. It shatters as it hits the wooden floor, but all I can think of is that deep, somber bellow. You did not hear so much as felt passing through your body. The town horn has sounded. All of you, keep working on the tree. It's the eve of Nelibri. The tree isn't decorated when the others come in. How would that look? It's probably nothing. A call for um, a hunting party. Maybe somebody saw a, a herd of elk. Elk? No one's seen elk in these parts since before we were born. Elk? Wild turkeys? It could be anything, Cord. Keep those ribbons tight before they tangle up the crystal ordinates. Uh, but Toby the Horn... I know, Tanjara. I'm going to find out. Just get the tree finished and fix your hair. Guy's a complete dick. What? Toby, that bastard's a complete dick. Thinks he's better than us just because he's a pure blood human. And Jara, humans don't live near as long as mixed breeds do. I mean, I'm part goblin, and you have traces of elf in you. But not Toby. He's just another field hand like the rest of us. Well, he is older than us, Cord. By what? A year? Two, at most. Point is, Toby's the worst of the lot. Thinks he's special just because he grew corn last summer. Wanna impress folks? Grow tomatoes. Tomatoes? What's so impressive about- Because tomatoes are a pain in the ass to grow. Get too much rain, the roots rot. But if you don't get enough rain, the plants don't grow enough. And if anything goes wrong, and I mean anything, the whole crop dies. Corn's a tough bastard could stand up to the atomics like the ancients had and come out just perfect. (laughs) I don't think corn can stand up to atomics. Ugh, anyone can grow corn. Toby's a dick, that's the point. And just because he's a pureblood, it doesn't... Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Toby, what is it? What's wrong? It's bad, guys. Like, really, really bad. The village horn only sounded when the guards on watch sighted something significant, such as a call for hunting parties, or a storm coming across the plains to give people time to take shelter, or something that was a significant threat. Are you sure, Elder Drake? Is it really them? I'm afraid so. The aren't at all coming. They're some distance from us, but they are definitely coming this way. They should be here by tonight. Please, please, everyone stay calm. In the past, when the Iron Dead have come, they have paid little to no attention to us. Most often, they are on their way to battle in a distant land or or harvesting. You mean they may be coming for our dead? Only one possibility. You know what the Iron Dead do to the bodies they harvest. The ones they deem fit enough, they convert them, our honored dead. They turn our loved ones into soldiers for their undead army. As for the rest, the rest, they, they... Grinds them up into a paste, food for their damned armies. I'm quite aware of what they do. An Iron Dead Legion harvested my father's remains when I was a boy. 
Then what are we going to do about it? What would you have us do? If we resist or try to stop them, they'll slaughter all of us. When the Iron Dead attacks a village, they leave nothing and no one. What they can't dig up or consume, they burn. The best thing we can do, indeed the only thing we can do, is stay out of their way. Let them take whatever it is they've come for. Do you wish to live? Do you? If so, there is no safer, wiser, better answer. I'm sorry. Everyone, go home and stay there. Board up your windows, lock your doors, and keep silent. Come on. This unpleasantness will be over. This meeting is ended. The Master of Sorrows grace upon you all. Can you believe this? A knell spree eve of all things. Matron told me about the Iron Dead once said they'd get me in the night if I didn't do my chores. I never thought they were real. I don't understand. They're real, all right. Nobody's seen them this side of the waste since, well, since any of us were born, but you all heard, Elder Drake. They're coming now. Screw this. I'm going home. Charming as ever, Toby. Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. Asshole. You're too harsh. Cord, he's scared. Who isn't? <sighs> Come on. We gotta get in before Matron locks the house up. What do you think they look like? What, the Iron Dead? I don't know. I heard stories. Maybe like rotting corpses, but, you know, with machine bits the ancients made. To replace their rotting guts. Did you ever want to... See one? Just to know what they look like? Curiosity's gonna get you killed one day. Remember the time you went up to the dragon's nest to see what the hatchlings look like? I wasn't burned that bad. All your hair got burned off. Your skin was peeling. You look like a walking brisket for a month. But I saw the hatchlings, didn't I? What about that barbarian boy? You thought he was cute, huh? God was nice to me. Nicer than you. Gob was a cannibal. Those perfumes he gave you were marinades. All right, he was... complicated. Don't be a dumbass, Tanjara. Leave bad shit alone. You'll live longer. Now come on, before Matron locks us out for the night. Huh. Well, if we're lucky, maybe they'll give us a slice of pie before we board the windows up. It is Nell Breeze Eve. Oh, master of Sorrows. Stop whining and hurry up. Let's go. Turned out there was no pie that evening. Matron said we were lucky enough to get the usual bowl of gruel. Then she sent us all to bed. I couldn't tell if the others fell asleep or just laid awake in bed as the cold night settled upon us, but I was awake. I know I should be scared, but my thoughts kept spinning and going over what could be passing just outside our walls. The moon's out. The fog. The iron dead on the march. What did they look like? Thoughts like that drove me, made me get out of bed, climb the long set of stairs to the roof of the house. I hate to say it, but Cord was right. My curiosity always got the best of me. I peered over the side of the roof and could just make out the road below. The forests and snow-capped mountains were awash in the dark, crimson light of the third moon, a light only elves can see. I did not have to wait long before the first of them started coming through the village. Nightmares walking in formation. 
They looked like soldiers marching two by two. Some of them still had the arms and legs which they had been born with. Others had their appendages replaced with advanced machines with blinking lights on them. One thing for sure, they had all seen better days. Their armor was dented, covered in scorch marks, sometimes eaten away by rust, exposing their insides. Torn, dangling flesh, blackened bones, wet organs, glistening in the moonlight. On a few, their heads were replaced with heavy metal pipes. Some kind of big weapon? How could they see? One still had its head, but was missing its lower jaw. A black rotting tongue flapping back and forth like a necktie. Then, it came. A huge mass of rotting flesh and fused metal came lumbering into the village. It moved on three massive mechanical legs. The stench rolling off it, almost visible to the eye, nearly made me gag when it passed. I watched them stomp down the road through the village. They were gone as though they had never been here. That's when he arrived. He was not one of the Iron Dead, that was clear. He was dressed in a long black cloak with a hood. At the center of town, he pulled the hood back, then reached into the cloak for a pen and paper, writing something. I wondered if daylight had ever touched his face. So deathly pale. Once he had finished writing and tucked the paper and pen back into his cloak, he started walking and turned his head, suddenly. Looking over his shoulder, he stared directly at me. I wanted to run back inside and hide, but I was so... cold. Then he walked away. I was shaking so much, I didn't trust my feet to keep me on the roof. After a short while... I went back inside. I did not sleep. I lay in bed in the dark. At the first hint of daylight, I got out of bed and dressed quickly. I wanted to be out of the house before anyone could stop me. The moment I stepped outside the boarding house, my life was on a whole new path. I would reflect on that moment, wondering whatever became of the other villagers. And Cord, even Toby. At that time, I thought I'd be back before any of them would be awake. And we would all celebrate Nelbury together as we did every year, stuffing ourselves with food and drink. But I didn't know... I was never going to see any of them again. Not alive, at least. I pulled my coat close about me and made my way to the far side of town, along the path leading to the graveyard. I knew what I was going to discover, but seeing it, the full reality of it, was something else. The graveyard had been completely turned up. Every grave torn, open, empty. Carefully, I stepped along the edges of the open graves. All that remained inside were the shattered coffins. These used to be friends, family, members of our village. Now those remains have been dug out of our cold earth, stolen, their bodies to be altered, rotting war machines. Would anyone care? The other villagers might be relieved. The elder would tell us that we'd been spared from this dark fate. Then again, maybe this fate awaited us all. Was this the future of all villagers? To join the legions of the Iron Dead? To march and kill and die and be rebuilt over and over again and again until everything is dead? I 
Jane was alone in the graveyard. But following at the dirt and morning mist, an iron trooper was scrambling out of an open grave. It started advancing upon me. No! Go away! I won't be one of you! I tried running, but I had to keep stopping, dodging the open graves around me. And from behind, the iron trooper clamped its icy arms around me. I tried to shake it off of me. The sickly, sweet smell of its rot made me gag. I was certain I was about to die. In losing balance, we tumbled into a grave. I fell into an open coffin beneath us. When I got to my feet, I found the trooper lying motionless on the remains of the coffin lid. Most of its head was missing. A blotchy black fluid had left a smear in the dirt wall, pointing directly at the open cavity in the trooper's skull. I scrambled out of the grave. I, I wanted to breathe fresh air to, to dust that horrible grave off my clothes. I would not have done that. The pale man in the cloak from the night before was staring down at me. Wouldn't have done what? Killed the trooper. That was a very poor move. He was the last one behind. Done feeding, you see. Feeding? Yeah. When bodies are too badly decayed, they feed upon the remains inside, converting them. You disturbed his feeding. The Iron Dead don't like that. Should have left him alone. But now? Well... Now they're aware of what you've done. What was that? A harvester. If you keep quiet and watch them, you'll learn a few things. How do they know what happened? None of the others are here. The Iron Dead are all extensions of the same gestalt being. What one knows, they all know. See? They know you killed their fellow trooper. Probably coming back now. Come back for what? For us? Not us. You. Strictly speaking, you're the one who killed him. I had nothing to do with this kid. But, 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 I didn't. It, it, it was an accident. He he came at me and we both fell in the grave. The, the, the fall killed him. You think you can argue self-defense with the armies of the dead? I can tell you definitively, after decades of study and observation while being stuck in this little pocket dimension, the Iron Dead cannot be reasoned with. Send a diplomatic envoy and you know what they do? They have him for lunch and march on to the next village for afters. Good luck with all that. Where are you going? What? You think I'm staying here with an angry battalion of undead cyborgs coming? Sorry, kid. Better places to be. I should go home. Maybe maybe the elders oh, can... Oh, I really wouldn't go there. That's the first place they'll go looking for you. If they don't find you there, there's a good chance they'll let most of the villagers live. Assuming they don't resist. So what should I do? Why are you asking me? I'm not involved in this. Then why were you following them? None of your soon-to-be-dead business. Now, if you don't mind, I have other places to be. I watched as the pale man walked away from the graveyard. I stood still, trying to think of what I should do now. I couldn't go home, and I could not stay here. After hearing the horn again, which sounded a good deal closer, I did the only thing I could think of. I followed after the pale man. The girl was young, no more than fifteen at best. Her hair was a tangle of snow-white curls and locks. She had the soft grey skin and red glowing eyes of an elf. Whatever she was, human or elf, she was also a drain of my patience. So, why were you following them? What? The Iron Dead. Last night, after they went through the town, I, I saw you following behind. Why? I said it's none of your business. I'm just curious is all. If you must know, I'm doing research. Research into what? Children who lack survival instincts. 
I'm inventing the Nobel Prize for the study of lemmings so I can claim it. Go away. I don't need you following me. If I go home, everyone gets killed. If I stay here, I get killed. And somehow you think tagging along with me will change that. I have nowhere else to go. Look, kid. People around me tend to have bad things happen to them. You're better off not following me. Going back will get me killed and turned into some undead soldier. You do have a point there. Are you saying I can come along? If I said no, would you go away? I... I think we already talked about this. I can see we're going to get along splendidly. We walked down a small incline to what had once been a freeway. The asphalt was breaking up and in some places had turned to powder, exposing the ground beneath. I, and the elf girl, walked along the road until we came upon an old Ford Mustang parked in the middle of the road. I opened the passenger door and got in. The elf crawled into the back. Not much space here. What is this thing? It's a car. Don't you need horses or something to move? Not this one. I see. So what's that thing? A driver. Is that a robot? The elders told us about them. They used to do all sorts of things for people until the Great Wars. This is Unit B-0B. I call him Bob for short. Wake up, Bob. 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 Please state the nature of the medical emergency. For the last time, Bob, you're not a medical bot. Please stop saying that when you wake up. I was not sleeping, Master. I was in a dormant state, conserving my power supply while awaiting your return. I detect we have a guest. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi. My name is Tanjara. Tanjara. A neo-elvish name, meaning she who be... I see you have disturbed more Iron Dead platoons. May I assume they are currently pursuing you? This time it was Tanjara here. Wait, the Iron Dead are after you too? I've had some negative encounters with other platoons over the years. All encounters with the Iron Dead are negative, Master. Focus, Bob. They're coming from the east. In that case, I suggest we drive to west. Do you have a particular destination in mind? Away from here? You heard the girl, Bob. Let's go. Do not be concerned, Tanjaro. I have expert-grade subroutines that include evasive driving techniques. Well, that sounds... good? So, if his name is Bob, what is yours? Does it matter? I certainly won't call you Master like Bob does. (sighs) Now I have to remember. Very well, then. Call me... Call me Byron. Byron? You were named after the evil one? Evil one? Since when? Since always. The legend? Byron the Ruiner? The master of sorrows shall face a being of pure evil, and their final battle will reshape the world. Byron isn't a very lucky name, you know. Well, it's Byron or Fred. I consider the name Fred aesthetically pleasing. Shut up, Bob. Incidentally, my internal calendar indicates today is December 25th. I wish you and Mr. Stanjara a Merry Christmas. If you must. Christmas? Do you mean Nelbury? Correct, Mistress. Nelbury is the elvish name of this holiday, which dates back to the great... Bob, shut up and drive. As you wish. Would you care for some music, Master Byron? I'd rather you didn't. In that case, I shall play it anyways. Must remember to hack his code. And also how.
You've been listening to The Byron Chronicles, Beyond the Veil, Episode 1, written by Eric Busby. Featured in the cast were David Alt as Byron, Nicole Goodnight, Ellie Hirschman as Bob, Carissa DeWitt as Cord, Justin Fife as Toby, Jeff Niles as the village elder, Derek Cook, Elise Kravik, and Ashley Nolan were the villagers. The script editor was Joe Medina. The audio engineer was Eric Busby. Music performed by Kevin McLeod, Adrian Von Ziegler, Codot Ag Music. Byron theme by Kai Hartwig. Credits by Kareem C. Cronville. This has been an ELB Productions, copyright 2019. Bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. I'm Darren Marlar, the creator and host of Weird Darkness, bringing you true stories of the paranormal, supernatural, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. New episodes seven days a week. Get the podcast at WeirdDarkness.com or search for Weird Darkness in your favorite podcast app. This probably isn't really worth noting, but during my final radiation tests of the day, I saw a blip out in the opposite direction of Ra. It's a bright light with the pinpoint clarity of a star, but obviously it's not a star since it wasn't there yesterday. Or even a few hours ago. Also, it's moving. Charlotte's taking this new development with all the grace of a garbage fire. She barged in on her hydraulic arm while I was checking Ra's radiation emissions earlier and started reciting the entire Caldwell Enterprises Emergency Preparedness Manual to me from start to finish. I took that to mean that she thinks the incoming light is a matter of some concern. I told her to be more optimistic, that it might not be coming directly toward us, that it could simply be a mirage, that she technically doesn't have a death to fear, but she just started reciting the manual all over again from the beginning. So I wedged a fallen tree branch up into the hydraulic tracks to block her from exiting the glass house. Season 1 of Girl in Space launches September 18th, 2017, with a new episode every two weeks. Subscribe using your favorite podcast app or stream episodes at girlinspacepodcast.com. It's all here in space. Prepare for a spine tingling, nerve shattering podcast featuring all your favorite monsters. You won't believe your ears when you listen to Monster, Monster Kid, Kid Radio. Radio. Hear your host, Derek M. Cook, and his ever-rotating stable of guests discuss your favorite classic and sometimes not-so-classic monster movies. Subscribe to Monster Kid Radio through iTunes or Stitcher, or visit monsterkidradio.net before the next weekly episode of Monster Monster Kid Kid Radio. Go through the archives for interviews with Sarah Karloff, Victoria Price, and Joel Hodgson. Listen to discussions about movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Island of Terror and King Kong. And don't forget convention coverage from Monster Bash and the HP Lovecraft Film Festival. Classic Monsters, Modern Talk, and the head of Rondo Hatton, only on Monster Monster Kid Radio! Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen. The demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already... Think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E.com. Twisted Pulp Magazine.